Hello, my name is Alison Murphy and I'm the head teacher of Ryden Community College. I'm going to now present uh, a little presentation that I gave uh, the other night to uh, approximately 150 parents explaining the situation in regarding our school and the STARS consultation. Uh, I hope I can be as unbiased as I possibly can be, even though I am passionate about Ryden, and I hope to explain what the situation is. Please bear with me. First of all, the consultation everybody wants. Everybody wants what seems to be everybody wants Ryden pupils, our first schools, and uh, a larger feeder, studying grammar school. But let's put this into a context. Why are we in consultation? The Ofsted report over 14 years ago for West Sussex local authority stated that there were too many forms of transitions at different ages, too many different school systems. So we had a school system where children may have transferred at year eight or may have transferred at year five or in fact stayed until they were in year seven and then of course there was the intermediate system starting in year six and leaving in year eight. We are the last area. Ryden successfully campaigned to actually keep this form of schooling many years ago and therefore West Sussex County Council are now consulting on what happens to this system, the STARS system. Uh, I'd like to point out that when this was originally um, neutered for West Sussex, Peter Griffiths, the then Cabinet Minister for Education, said that it would be most schools. We are the last school. By that definition, then we are the one that is left, e.g. most schools are and we are not. The national pattern of transfer confuses so many different people. Educationalists talk about key stages and they talk about when people are going to transfer in year eight, nine, seven, six, and a lot of people don't understand that. So let's try and explain what the key stages are. Key stage one and two are normally in primary schools to the age of 11 years. Key stage three and four are in secondary to the 16 years. And key stage five are 16 to 19 years, uh, six forms or apprenticeships. The whole agenda now is for pupils, students to stay on in some form of education until their age 19. Key stage three is at the end of year nine and key stage four is year 10 and 11. In the independent education system, uh, most schools transfer at the end of year eight or at the start of the end of year six. So we've actually fit the independent stage of schooling. An, lot, an awful lot of our pupils actually transfer to the independent sector, either at the end of year six or at the end of year eight. Um, Lansing College and Christ Hospital do actually promote us as one of their feeders. As I said, everybody wants our pupils. But why do the first schools want year six back in their schools? Curriculum has changed. Um, year five and six is now upper key stage two and it's to be seen as a whole. The first schools then would be accountable for the whole of key stage two outcomes. Security of their school in an ever-changing financial situation has got to be considered. They feel, and they have quoted and said, that pupils are not mature enough at the end of year five to come into a system like this. Many of our parents would disagree. Returning year six to the first schools is in line with the national pattern. So the consultation does seem to make sense. But I ask you to consider a number of factors. Space in our first schools, 
all of them, facilities that are required for Year 6, how will groups be managed in some of our schools, 4, 5 and 6 together, whether pupils are mature enough. And what has the learning journey been for the past 45 years? Has it been successful whilst the intermediate system has been here? What's been the outcomes? If Year 6s go back, can Ryden be a two-year school? That's the question that's being muted by our first schools and Stenning Grammar School. For us, and I need to make this clear, for Ryden, that would mean redundancies. And it would mean a reduction in teaching and support staff, and actually a reduction of specialist teaching, even in a school left with year seven and eight. Our building is built for three years. You would have a two-year group wandering around a three-year building that takes an awful lot more heating and actually more to maintain. Pupils coming in one year and then leaving the next, is that a really good system? Would we become a satellite for Stenning Grammar School, which is nine miles away? If we did, that would mean the end of Ryden Traditions, the end of a curriculum that we provide at Ryden. And that is really clear in the communications that have come out recently from Stenning Grammar School. Ryden governing body would actually be disbanded. If we combined or federated with Stenning Grammar School, you would have a governing body that had mostly Stenning Grammar School members because of their key stage four and because of boarding. Therefore, there would be more governors of Stenning than Ryden governors. That would mean Ryden would have no autonomy. And that's important. The Storrington Thacom area of rural schools that we call STARS will have no choice of schooling. Okay, it's a tricky picture, but it gets even more complicated. When we look at Key Stage 1, and that's the data that the first schools are responsible for, totally responsible for, the STARS heads have said that their data at Key Stage 1 is not quite accurate. That means that there's far too many Level 3s. In fact, they're way above any other locality in West Sussex. For a child to get a level 3 at the end of Key Stage 1, they should be a level 5 or a level 6 at the end of Key Stage 2. Key Stage 2 results are at the end of Year 6. These are the results and the work of Year 3, Year 4, Year 5, all in the first schools, and then two terms at Ryden. We take the tests in May, they are national tests, and they have to be conducted with official exams and are marked compared to all schools in the country. Ofsted tell us that our data at Key Stage 2 means we are inadequate, but they realise that the results are not just ours. Ofsted, each time they have visited us, checked our data, looked through, have agreed that the Key Stage 2 results are just two terms of the work that we do. Now, I am not against any school, nor is my governing body. In fact, we work really hard with the first schools. We're working together to raise achievement, particularly in year five and six. Our STARS locality plan for 2015-6 
really concentrates on achievement in English and maths. Our year five and six teachers are meeting on a regular basis to plan and to actually look at how we can improve. Our aim in STARS is to achieve reading at a level four at 90%, 85% writing and 85% maths. That will mean that children will be at a level four plus in the current system or at the national expectation. As a group of heads, first schools and myself, we looked at the data in year four and year five. We identified that 36% of our current year four and five pupils are not on track to achieve the national expectation. This is before they ever come to Ryden. Therefore, we have a challenge. The schools that are part of the STARS schools are Washington, Ashington, West Chiltington, Storrington, Amberley and Thacom. And in fact, we have a number of out of area pupils also. All these schools that feed into us have their own curriculum. In 2014, pupils entering our doors in September, only 47% were achieving as expected, with another 15% the possibility of achieving their level four benchmark. This means only 62% in 2014 were on track before arriving at Ryden. Data is a really complex issue and I need you to consider the following information. The STAR schools collectively when coming into Ryden we have each year between 17% and 25% special educational needs. This is a significant factor in any data set. The Chantonbury group of schools that serve Stanning Grammar School direct into year seven have 10 to 11% special educational needs. At Ryden, our cohorts, which is each year group, have more summer born children, e.g. year six, 2014 to five, 45% are summer born. Nick Gibbs is looking at the impact being born in the summer has on a child's education. This means that 10 year olds are being judged against 11 year olds, sometimes nine, 10 months older than that particular child. We have 11% pupil premium children at Ryden. These are what the government called disadvantaged children. All pupil premium pupils that are not sent actually achieve the national expectation or above. It's our pupil premium that are sent that aren't achieving the national expectation. Key stage two outcomes. I need to repeat this because this is so important. Yet our key stage two results are the sum of year three, four, five, and two terms at Ryden. And also Ryden is not against any school. In fact, we need to work together. So the following charts are the outcomes and I've anonymized them. And the reason for that is that we're not identifying any school, but we're showing you what happens and how we try and improve. This is the reading test, key stage two, 2015 results. Remember, as a group of schools, we want to be at 90% plus. So group number schools one to six are schools in our area. They are not in alphabetical order. And as you can see, there are only two schools in the STARS area that are actually achieving the national expectation of what we would want. The other group is our out of area children. So school two, school five and out of area are above the 90%. The rest of our star schools, and then that means ourselves, 
are lower. Writing teacher assessment at Key Stage 2 in 2015, remember we want to be at 85%. There are only two schools in the STARS area that are actually achieving that. Some schools have a specifically small cohort. School 2, 3, 4 and 5 and are out of areas are all not achieving 85%. This then has a result for Ryden at 77%. We need to improve as a group of schools. Our major area for improving is spelling, punctuation, grammar. Again, level four, key at key stage two, we really need to be between 80 and 85%. Only one school actually achieves this and only just. The rest of the schools, two, three, four, five, six, and are out of area, are all significantly below. When we come to maths, and West Sussex are really concerned about maths in West Sussex. We only have one school that is achieving above 85%. Schools 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 and our out of areas are all below, which means we are below. We have got appeals in for our reading papers and some for our maths papers, but that will only be about 2 or 3%. When we come to science at Key Stage 2, fabulous results. There are only actually two schools in STARS that don't achieve 95%. But actually when you look, they are achieving above 85. That's school 4 and school 6. Everywhere else, including, and that means then ourselves, we are doing fabulously. I ask you, is that because they come at the end of year five to a school where they can have science in labs and really develop and really get to understand their science? Key stage three results at the end of year eight. That's a year ahead of the national norm. That has to be our true measure of a school when children have been with us for three full years. Ofsted thought so. Key stage three for us ends at the end of year eight. Nationally, key stage three ends at the end of year nine. For pupils to be able to achieve a grade C or above, or the new measure of five or above, we need pupils to be at a five plus at the end of year eight. Rodin's aim is for 85% or more in each subject. So how do we do at Ryden? The data is our key stage three data that follows. Ofsted see this, have verified it, we have moderations, and that's why Ryden was viewed to be good with outstanding features. I ask you, people actually really need to understand the full picture. So here is the key stage three results over time for Ryden. Our English results, our maths results, and I'm now going to go just through the slides. The figures speak for themselves. Science, computing, history, geography, design and technology. We used to be a design and technology specialist school. It makes sense. We're now a science specialist school. The data makes sense. French and German are under. French because for many children this is a subject they've only studied with us since year six. Um, they are on track to achieve high levels, about 85% at GCSE. And our German, they've only been studying for two years in year seven and year eight. We've looked at the trends and they're all on track. Art, again, fabulous. Music, doing really well. Religious studies, looks like a decline of only a couple of percent, but actually different years and different cohorts have different strengths. 
that would be norm. You would expect to see that in data. PE, here's a classic example. Data going up and down, depending upon a year group strength. There's been an awful lot, a lot out there about us not being financially viable. And my governing body is extremely anxious for me to make this very clear. We are viable. The governors and SLT have worked extremely hard in setting a balanced, well-defined budget for 2015-16. What might be the confusion, in 2014-5, to five, we had been cut twice because we were a small school and there was a difference in the way that schools were being funded. So we had double cuts. That's why West Sussex Secondary Heads agreed to making sure that we had a subsidy. That was last year. This year, we've got a growth in numbers and therefore we're entitled to a growth fund. We have a balanced budget and we work really hard. Ryden is viable on that. In the STARS area, there are enough pupils for us to be viable. We have pupils coming out of area because of our ethos also. Local secondary schools are oversubscribed. So I ask you, if you look at projected numbers in our area, we could have a 600 to 700 secondary school, 11 to 16. There are examples of that in West Sussex and they are viable. There's also been communication about GCSE outcomes. Recently, a West Sussex document came out only with two years regarding Year 7 pupils at Ryden compared to Year 7 pupils at Church Street. They chose two years and these were only pupils that attended Stenning Grammar School. The 2013 GCSE outcomes for Ryden are minus the 15% of Ryden pupils that did not go to SGS. And in 2014, there are minus 19% of pupils that didn't go to SGS. So let's look at that data again. What's been presented is the number of pupils that actually went to Stenning Grammar School in Year 9. So they were here in Year 7 and then they went to Stenning in Year 9. But 15% of our pupils in that year group did not go to Stenning. When we look at 2014, and I got the data from West Sussex regarding the GCSE outcomes at Stenning of Ryden pupils, we had 19% not go to Stenning. Of those students that went to other schools, many independent, the Weald, Midhurst Brother College, I was able to verify and work out the calculation and that 79% achieved 5 plus A star to C as compared to the data you've been given at 63.8. Ryden is not just about outcomes. If you walk through our school hall, you will see a number of our year events. We have a strong curriculum, strong results at the end of Key Stage 3, and we do an awful lot more than any other school. This is just some of our events, from Weald and Downland to actual proms, discos, um, Macmillan cake sales, geography field trips, pop-up restaurants, mocktail, Sky Sports Leaders, Science Days, Beyond the Oak Cloud, Firework Extravaganza, you name it, we do it. It can be exhausting, but it's such fun and the pupils 
love it. We also have numerous clubs, from rock bands, to science, to rocket club, to textiles, to debate club, to Lego, to football, to rugby, you name it, we have it. Now, a lot of people have said that if we were 11 to 16 school, we would really damage curriculum choices at SGS. Well, curriculum is changing at Key Stage 4. Key Stage 4 should only be two years. The two-year measure should be in subjects of English, Maths, Science, Humanities, which means History or Geography, a modern language, French, German, Spanish at SGS, and then should be a number of other subjects. We can provide a number of those subjects, like DT, Music, Art, FT, PE and Drama, and we're strong in all the academic subjects that the government wants to be in a traditional educational system. So, what do you do? If you go to the West Sussex site, you will see there is a link to have your say. If you go to the Ryden website, you will see a tab, Ryden in Danger, click on that, and that will then give you another link to have your say. You'll also find a petition there to sign. You can go to saveridenschool.co.uk, which is a governor's site, which is looking at how to actually be able to promote Ryden and the benefits, particularly for Year 6. Now, I know it's confusing. Do we want Year 6 or should Year 6 return to the first schools? Should Ryden become an 11 to 16 school? Let me make this clear. Year 6 have a great deal of benefits at Ryden. The national pattern is for Year 6 to be in the first schools. We understand that. So we say to you, as parents and carers, do you want your Year 6 to be at Ryden? If so, tell West Sussex County Council that. If Year 6 have to go back to the first schools, because West Sussex have decided that, then there should be an 11 to 16 secondary school at Ryden, serving the local community. We can do it, and we can do it together. The choice is yours. Thank you.